So how do we control layout in Photoshop? Just to review, we do it by growing the canvas size from the center. The only way to be assured that your image is centered on the page, and we're going to need this for when we print as well, is to open the file and then grow your canvas size, image canvas size, from the center out. And then your image will be exactly dead center. The reason we made it 8 by 8 inches, an even integer of inches, is so that we have an even boundary between this and the edges of our paper. Okay, next, I am going to turn on my grid, which is under View Show Grid. And the shortcut for that is Command Apostrophe. Personally, I use my eyes a lot. My eyes actually get like bruising and I get iris infections because I look at digital screens for so long and have for so many years. So I have to be careful about it. This is what kills my eyes the most. The moray patterns created by the grid. That's why I put a white tablecloth over the, the other grid. But you need it in this case, but not for very long. So you need your grid and then you can zoom in so that you can see the inches in your rulers. And then move your guides to be exactly one inch. It will stick to the grid from each side and from the top and from the bottom. Then you can hit command apostrophe and get rid of that grid. And now you have this beautiful template. It's like a kid's card game where it has a nice little box and a place for each of these square cards. So I already know what my first frame is, frame one. And now, when I move it, it nests and snaps right into that, that box. And if you did 30 by 40 and you have an 8 by 8 animation, then you're going to have a nice border around it as well. You can always grow your canvas size more, just always grow it from the center if your animation isn't perfectly square. Okay, so I have my first frame. I have my middle frame. This frame shows the the first impact. So I got to find that. And to do that, I might have to turn off my middle frame, which is why I marked it as green. So I know how to get back to it. So my first impact might be, oh, leave that one on. That's the first frame. Might be here. Actually, let's do the one right before it. There, you see the feet showing? That's the one I want. So then I have to click on that layer and then move it up. Remember, you want to have auto select turned off. So you're, you're only dealing the, the pages from your flipbook that you select. OK, the next frame I want is this one where impact is made. So I select that layer. There we go. And you see how that color shift helps make that obvious. So you see the little feet there, but then that impact is made more obvious with that color shift I added by animating on the stage. Then we have a new reality, which is this. You see the color is a little different, but now that tower of cupcakes has been knocked out or muffins. Now I turn on my middle frame where we have the next impact happening. And then we have the next, which shows the color shift to the pinks. Right? And now we have this crazy frame, which shows all three of them dropping. It's right there. And I'm going to use that one and put it here. And then I'm going to show another one of them dropping and changing the color yet again, but towards something closer to the original, towards the blues. And actually, I might use this one instead for the speed. So you get to choose what layers 
what moments tell your story best, but I'm being guided by my rough storyboard sketch. And then we just have the blank background. And now those are my, my story, sh uh, my refined storyboard telling my animation in nine frames. And those color shifts really help to make it more impactful. So now what do I do? Remember I renamed it. It's not the stage file anymore. It's called refined storyboard. So I'm going to save it as my PSD in case I want to use different frames or want to change it around. And then I'm going to save a copy as a JPEG, or if you're using PhotoP, export out as a JPEG to the desktop. A quality of 10 makes it so it's fewer than five megabytes, which is good for Canvas. Now I can close this. Now I need to organize all my files into my folder. So here is my assignment three folder. I have my storyboard. I'm going to call this storyboard two because I already saved one last class. So I'll just go through the same steps twice. But what's nice about this is you can see the difference. So here is the storyboard before. And now here is the storyboard with the color changes, right? I chose the same frames, but this makes it a lot more obvious that the transformation is happening. But any refined storyboard that comes from your animation will meet the requirement. Okay, the next thing I need is the JPEG of that storyboard. It's right here. I mark it orange. That is an online format. PSDs do not go to Canvas. So I have three things I need to submit now. I'm going to put them over here. I have my refined storyboard. I have my GIF animation and I have my rough storyboard. Those are the three requirements for assignment three, why we had extra time to do it, because it's asking more of you. So all that's missing is my refined storyboard requirement. So I'm going to put that in. Remember, if you update and resubmit, do not delete your previous work. So I can see the improvements made because my memory is not that good. So I might even put both storyboards on. Nah, I won't. Because you all have kind of a limited size in Canvas for the course, for your course files. And once you use that up, it won't let you embed images anymore. You'll have to attach them, which is a pain for everybody. So we try to be mindful about our image size, which is another reason I don't want you to to post things that are in the wrong resolution. All right, so now I've got all three components. And everything's in my folder. Nothing's floating on my desktop for this project. And if I wanted to print it for my midterm critique, I would print that refined storyboard because you can't print a time-based media, right? So instead, you print the, the nine frames that tell your story that show your storytelling skill. And that's, that's all there is. I'll come around and help.